What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, today, I'm gonna do something I've never done before. Not only am I gonna update my Flipper Zero starter guide, but I'm gonna do it using only the official firmware. Now, you might ask yourself, why? Well, honestly, with all of the advances to Flipper Zero firmware over the past few years, I feel like if you're a beginner, you should learn the ins and the outs of the official Flipper firmware before you learn how to use anything else. We're still gonna add a bunch of functionality to your Flipper Zero, don't worry about that. But we're gonna be doing it all inside the official Flipper Zero firmware. Let's get at it. All right, so first things first, I'm actually recovering from a cold right now, so if my voice sounds a bit wonky, there's nothing I can do about it, but the show must go on. So the first thing you're gonna need after you get your Flipper Zero is an SD card. Now, I'm gonna be using this 64 gig SD card that I got from Rabbit Labs, but you really don't need anything more than like a 16. However, I have found that the cheapest SD cards that I found basically on like Amazon and stuff are 32 gig. Just make sure you invest in a name brand SD card like SanDisk. Don't buy something cheap like a knockoff from AliExpress for like three bucks. We've run into a lot of problems with those, so spend the extra money, get something good. Just don't get something huge. I've seen people try to throw like 256 gig in there and it's just way too much space you'll never use it that much and i think occasionally it does have some sort of compatibility issues so just get a smaller one you don't gotta go nuts so we're gonna take our flipper zero and the sd card we're gonna insert it with the terminal side up place it into here and if you don't have a thumbnail that's long enough or something, use something to poke it in. Make sure it's all the way in. I'm using a tension bar I got from my Jimmy Long's intermediate set of lock picks. Just go in there and make sure you push it all the way in. It will click in place. In. So now we know it is all the way in there. I'm surprised I still have to say this, but every few weeks it seems like somebody's like, I can't get the SD card in. It keeps kicking out. You didn't push it in far enough. Once you do that right on the screen, it's going to say all data will be saved to the SD card. Click OK. So that means you're ready to go. OK, so SD card inserted. We're on our way. The second thing we want to do is update our firmware. So we're going to do that using an app called QFlipper. Now, QFlipper is available on pretty much every platform, Windows, Mac, iOS and Android. So what we're going to do is actually use Windows because it just makes it easier for me to show you guys right on the desktop. So we're going to head on over to Flipper 0.1 right here. And you can see this is the Flipper Zero's website. This is where you can shop for accessories, buy more flippers, things like that. Now, before we head on over to downloads up here, I actually want to take a quick segue to the documents, but not before a quick segue to today's sponsor. Delete me. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I hate data brokers. Data brokers are the worst. When you sign up to websites, sometimes those websites sell your personal information to data brokers. And then once the data brokers get their hands on it, they sell it off to the highest bidder over and over and over again. Sooner or later, your data is literally all over the internet. Now, if you're anything like me, you might not want your information literally all over the internet. Well, that's where Delete Me comes in. Delete Me literally scours the internet looking for your information on the data broker websites. And whenever they find you on a data broker websites, they send a request to remove your data. Cause that's right. If you actually contact these websites, they're required to remove your information. Now, if you were to do that all on your own, that would take so much time. It would be completely impractical. Delete Me has searched thousands of websites for my information, saving me literally over a day's worth of time and removal. That's absolutely fantastic. Since I started using Delete Me about a year ago, my online footprint has shrunk dramatically. So if you're as sick and tired of those data brokers as I am, go to joindeleteme.com slash Sasquatch or use code Sasquatch, that's S-A-S-Q-U-A-C-H for 20% off. Thank you so much to Delete Me for the continued support. You guys are awesome. Let's get back at it. So the Flipper Zero folks did a really, really good job on their documentation here. I found like a solid, probably 75% of the questions that we get from the brand new people over on our Discord, they're things that are found directly in the documentation. All you gotta do is spend a few minutes going through and reading everything, it will help you a ton. One of the things that we always stress to new users is to read through the documentation before asking questions. The reason why is that you're A, better able to understand the answers we're giving you, and you'll actually ask much, much better questions in the meantime. We get people rolling up all the time asking like, what is bad USB? And you don't get a ton of reception to that. And the reason being is if you don't put any effort into asking a question, it's really, really hard to expect effort for somebody answering your question. So read the documentation, learn as much as you possibly can, and then ask pointed questions. And you'd be surprised. You'll get a ton more people out there just wanting to answer your questions. Moving on. So we're gonna head on over to the downloads up here and download QFlipper. Now, obviously I said it's available for the mobile app. So that's Android and Apple. We're going to update via PC, so click download for Windows. Of course, I've already got it installed, you know, 
I'm making this video, of course it's installed. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'll minimize this, and let's load up QFlipper. Cool, we've got QFlipper loaded, but it's not plugged in. So we're gonna wanna take our Flipper Zero and plug it in to our computer. Now, very important, make sure whatever cable you're gonna use to plug in your Flipper Zero to your computer carries data. It's amazing, I still get people almost every single day, well, maybe not that often, but that are plugging things in, they've got the wrong cable, it doesn't carry data, and they can't get it to work. Worst case, if you can't get it to work, use the cable the Flipper came with, super easy. So plug it on in, and you should see right up on the screen here, boom, you'll have the Flipper Zero in Q Flipper. Very simple. Very easy. All right, so obviously right down here, we have that big old install button. But before we click on that, let's go ahead and check out what this little wrench does because that shows the different update channels we can choose from. Now we have release, release candidate, and development. So the release build is the most stable up-to-date build. It's got all the features and it's been bug chased. It's got everything going on. It should be the most stable and it should pretty much almost never crash on you. Now my flipper doesn't really crash very often anyway, but you know, again, release is the most stable. From there, they have release candidate, which may have a few extra functionality here and there, but may introduce a little bit more instability. And then you have development. I honestly usually install development because it's got some of the latest, greatest stuff. Sometimes it may have stability issues. I honestly don't see that many problems. They do a really, really good job of not implementing things that are gonna immediately break their firmware. But again, dev's a little bit less stable. So for what we're doing today, I'm gonna to go with release because this is kind of the bare bones, most basic install to make sure everything's as stable as possible. You'll also notice down here the check app updates button, which is something we'll talk about later because we can actually install apps through lab.flipper.net or through your mobile device. For now, now that we have release selected, we're gonna go ahead and click the install button and it's gonna say new firmware, which is release 1.1.2 at the time of this recording. If you watch this a uh, month from now, this may be a different number, don't worry about it. And yeah, it's just gonna go ahead and update. It's that simple. So sit back, relax, maybe make a sandwich or something. It shouldn't take that long, but this will finish up in no time. Hey, just like that, success. That took like two or three minutes, so it wasn't really all that bad. And now we're back in action. So we'll click continue on our screen right here. And yeah, let's take a look at what's going on. You can just click on, if you click on the image right there, it makes it full screen. And you can also control the flipper zero with the buttons right here, which is pretty cool. So let's just do a quick lay of the land for our flipper zero. If you press the middle button right here, you'll see that you have the menu. So we start with sub gigahertz. What is sub gigahertz? Well, sub gigahertz controls things like doors, some lights, things that work on the sub gigahertz spectrum. So under one gigahertz. Then we have 128K RFID. Those are things like pet chips. If your pet has a microchip, you can actually locate it with the flipper zero and read it, which is very cool. We have NFC. NFC are things like hotel cards. They use things like MyFair Classic and other protocols. This can actually read the card and if you can kind of decipher it, you can sometimes emulate them as well, which is very cool. Infrared, which is pretty obvious. Infrared is infrared right there. That black patch is an IR sensor. It can both read and transmit, which means it can act like a remote control, but you can also read remote controls. Makes it pretty useful. GPIO. Now GPIO are these holes up top. They work with things like GPIO boards. So this is the video game module it plugs right into the top and yeah gpio boards add a ton of functionality you can have anything from wi-fi to extended sub gigahertz you can add extended ir you can add nrf24 which is used for things like mouse jacking really with gpio there's so many options go down i button so i button are the little pogo pins on the back these are not used very much in america but i've heard at least in europe and stuff these are used for things like gates and other stuff honestly i've almost never touch this because again being in america they don't really use these so i haven't messed with it too much moving on we have bad usb now bad usb actually allows you to run scripts through usb on a computer and basically all you have to do is plug your computer into your flipper zero and you can actually execute code using the flipper zero it's just that simple very cool u2f so it's universal two factor so you can use this as a security key for a lot of things on the internet and off now one of the things to note is that it's not used on microsoft 
because there's a license for that, which is, I believe, really expensive. And then we have our settings. Now, one of the things I said before is that you can use your phone to update. So if we go to settings, we can go to Bluetooth and all you have to do is turn Bluetooth on. What that's going to do is allow your phone to recognize it. You can pair it with your phone and then you can do all the stuff that we're going to be doing today directly on your phone. Super simple, super easy. We go back, then we go to app. So apps are where you load your applications. However, where do you get applications? Lab.flipper.net is the answer to that question. So let's go ahead, grab some applications. First thing we're going to do, if we want to connect to lab.flipper.net, we need to close QFlipper. Otherwise, QFlipper is going to occupy our data communication with our flipper and lab.flipper.net is not going to be able to do it. So we'll close this and then fire up lab.flipper.net. Okay, here we are, lab.flipper.net. All we're going to do is click the connect button and in the window that pops up, so mine's already connected. There'll be a little window that pops up and it's going to ask you which thing to connect to. Obviously connect it to the Flipper Zero. It shows it by name. Super easy. Can't really mess that up. Once you're in here, you'll notice that you actually have the ability to install firmware directly from the browser. So if you're, you know, at somebody else's house and you want to update your Flipper, you don't need to install QFlipper, which is kind of nice. All right. So lab.flipper.net has a bunch of tools in here, which are pretty cool. First of all, we're going to go back to apps in a second. So let's check out files. So files show you both what's on the SD card right here. So you can see all the files I have on my flipper currently, but you can also see if you go back the internal flipper storage. Now don't mess with internal files unless you really know what you're doing. It's a great way to break your flipper zero. And if you do break your flipper zero, you're going to probably have to go into DFU mode to fix it. And just as a side note, if you do find yourself into a situation where your flipper just doesn't work, what you're going to do is hold the back and left buttons so left and back you're going to hold this for like a long time until your flipper turns on in dfu mode then when you've done that plug it in and load up q flipper and it will allow you to flash your firmware back it's not very hard i've run into that a ton of times i've broken my flipper a bunch of times because i flashed my own firmwares that were broken <laughs> i've definitely broken firmware before for the flipper zero compiling it myself so beyond that we also have cli which is command line interface what's cool is you get this little graphic or ascii of the flipper zero dolphin and if you click help we actually see there's a ton of stuff we can do in the CLI right here. Now, this is a little bit beyond the scope of what I want to show you on like a day one video, but it's really cool to know it's in here. Beyond that, if we go to NFC tools, we'll see MF key 32 V2 NFC attack. So what this is, is if you go and scan like a hotel key, you can scan all the sectors on it, but you might not be able to use it. So MF key 32 is a way of deciphering those keys and making it so that the flipper zero can actually emulate that car. If we go beyond that, we have paint. Paint's a pretty cool little function. It's a little bit not useful unless you're doing things like animations, but it is pretty fun. So let's do something silly like, let's just draw a rectangle on the screen. Well, that rectangle on the screen is now there we go on my flipper zero so you can draw stuff on the screen of the flipper it's you know whatever it's not that useful but when i was making animations i was able to take single frames of my animation and put it directly on the screen to see how the flipper actually interpreted those so it was pretty useful when i was making animation and if we move on we have pulse plotter so pulse plotter is actually used to reverse engineer raw signals gathered by the flipper zero now i've never actually used this before and i don't really know exactly how it works so it's especially for a first day video you definitely don't need to know how to use this but what we do want to use is our app store because the app store is absolutely fantastic they introduced this ah uh, man almost a year and a half ago maybe longer it's hard to say but this is where all of the great applications you can download directly to your flipper zero are now they have apps that do all sorts of things like right here gemini ai that will allow you to use a flipper zero wi-fi dev board this is the official one it's just got a case that i printed on it and you can actually use this to connect to the internet and then connect to gemini ai for all sorts of cool stuff i'm actually gonna be doing a video on gemini ai and flipper http which is another way of connecting your flipper to the internet it's so cool so if we go through the apps we can see there's like an image viewer there's banana because everybody loves banana i'm not sure what it does but it just sounds fun uh, what else is in here? Because they add stuff all the time, so I don't even know what's in here all the time. Magic 8-Ball is very fun. Cyborg Detector makes an NFC field, so if you've got an implant, it'll actually activate it. 
pretty cool. The breaking the internet key copier. So the key copier allows you to hold your key up to the flipper zero and move little lines up and down. And what that does is it gives you a code. You could pretty much use going to a locksmith to create a duplicate of that key, which is a very cool thing to do. Now, obviously you can do this with a bar of soap or like a pad and a pencil. It's not really all that complicated, but it was a really cool thing that they did it on the flipper and it absolutely blew up all over the internet. Now, scrolling down, what else do we have? We have the resistance calculator. This has been out for a while. It's a very, very cool little app because it allows you to key in the colors of a resistor to know what the actual resistance is. And I mean, there's a bunch of people out there, obviously, that know how to do that right off the top of their heads. But for me, I struggle a little bit with what the different colors are. So this makes life a lot easier. You've got the barcode app, which allows you to generate your own barcodes right on the flipper that are scannable. I've tried it. It's very cool. Counter apps. And then if we keep scrolling down, we'll find we have the game of life, which I always thought was really cool. Just kind of an organic like evolution simulator. Very cool. T-Rex runner. If you've ever been offline mode on Chrome, this is basically what you get is T-Rex runner. So you get to jump over stuff. Scrolling down further, we've even got Doom. So you can install Doom right like that. So if you wanted to install something, all you have to do is click install. It's literally that simple. It will take a few seconds Do 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 install. Literally that simple, couldn't be easier. That's why I love the App Store. And that's why I'm recommending before you get into all the other stuff of downloading anything else, go to the App Store, download whatever you want, play around with everything, because this is really how you learn how to use the Flipper Zero. So if we scroll all the way back up to the top, do do, here we go. You'll see the installed box right here. What this allows us to do is actually update all of the apps we already have on our Flipper Zero. It's super simple. You just click update all. And in a few seconds, it'll go through and update every single app that you have on your phone to the latest and greatest version. These apps actually are updated relatively frequently. So if it's been a few weeks since you installed your app, there's a good chance there might be an update for it. So just keep an eye on it. So yeah, that's really the most simple, most basic starter guide that I can give you for the Flipper Zero. I really wanted to boil it down to the most bare bones, basic nitty gritty, because I really want you guys to learn exactly what the flipper zero is all about before you go adding anything else to it so download some apps learn how they work go through all of the different files and all of the different applications that the flipper zero official firmware has to offer once you've gone through and learned how all of that stuff works if you want to learn a little bit more do a little bit more do different things check out any of my other starter videos which have some other features we can add including setting up the wi-fi dev board but i've actually been getting a ton of requests to just go over how to set up the official firmware and get the most out of it so if you just got a flipper zero follow the instructions play with the apps play with everything and just enjoy and most of all hack the planet please make sure to like comment subscribe how many of you guys aren't subscribed just click the little button right there it takes two seconds but it helps me out tremendously as always if you want to support the channel support our sponsors go to joindeleteme.com slash sasquatch or use code sasquatch for 20 percent off you guys are absolute legends and we'll catch you next time